Before pouring out the first skull on camera, let me go over some of the materials that are used in the project. First, we have the Smoothcast 305. This is a longer setting resin than the standard 300, SC300. Part A, Part B. Um, they're used in equal amounts. It's a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio mix. Now, of course, you can see the, the 305B is a little further down than the A because I have pre-mixed up a, as it says on the little bottle here, the 305 bone color in part B. You mix it in part B because the part B, as you can see in the large bottle, is clear. All right. Now what I use to mix this, um, it's a ratio, it, it, it varies. It varies between um, the ingredients used, but it is the So Strong Flesh Tone Color Tint let me get this little guy up here. Okay. Mixed with So Strong White Color Tint with one drop, and I mean one drop, because this is the strongest of all of them. The So Strong Yellow Color Tint. This stuff is murder. Um, if you can manage half a drop into a cup, approximately this size plastic cup right here is what was used to mix it up in so I could see through because it's a nice clear cup. I mixed up about to, about to this much here. I don't know how, how much it is in ounces. I just eyeballed the, the amount of resin I put in um, and mixed it that way. I used several drops of the flesh tone even more of the so strong white mixed it up thoroughly with a uh, you know a tongue depressor or stir stick okay then poured it into this little I guess this is a a condiment dispenser bottle picked it up at Walmart 97 cents this is not expensive stuff here um, and then I noticed that the white and the flesh was still on the bottom, that there was more colorant on the bottom of the cup. I poured this back in and mixed it up again, poured it back into here. Now, what I've got is my base color for the bone. And before each use, you must remember to shake it up. As you can see, some of the color does settle on the bottom a bit. Okay, so you want to be sure that it's well mixed and well distributed before using it. Now, our mold was powdered yesterday. And let's turn it around so the front, front is facing the camera. Now the first thing to do is to set resin deep down into the teeth on the lower jaw section. Because the amount needed in the teeth is so small, I use these little disposable graduated measuring cups to measure out my resin. These are measured in eighth ounce, eighth fluid ounces. Uh, it, it's measured out in drams, cc's by the 5cc increment, and 5 milliliter increments as well as the half teaspoon increments. Okay? I like to just use the simplest one that I can find and generally I'll go with the drams because this is such a small amount of resin that's required. Um, these bottles, these squeeze bottles with the uh, this, uh, dispensing top are what I put the resin into. It comes in large um, gallon containers. Now I simply going to gently squeeze a little bit in here, a little bit at a time, just small amounts, until I reach one dram measure in the cup. On second thought, 
I've gone to two drams because this needs to have colorant added to it for the teeth. All right, now because, like I say, these are disposable cups, I'm going to mix up um, my resin color right in the cup, okay? We're going to go with the So Strong White. Don't need a lot. Don't need a lot of this. That's about all we need. Believe it or not, it is that strong. Now, just so it's not stark raving white, I'm going to add a tiny, tiny bit of the So Strong Flesh. How tiny? Well, I'm going to take my modeling tool with the spear tip and I'm simply going to put half a drop on the tip of the modeling tool. Now, I want you to see this. It's not a lot of colorant that's required here. All right. And I'm going to use this to mix this up. And you can see the color changing in here. Okay, now that little bit of flesh tone was just a bit much. So, I'll clean off my tool, piece of paper towel, put her down. I'm going to grab the So Strong White again. Always, always, always cover your, your colorant bottles when you're done using them. I'm going to make sure that this is down to the tip. And now I'm just going to add a few more drops of white. I do want the white to be the dominant color. I want this to be whited out. So we take a few more drops. Okay, this is very thick stuff. And it is so strong, as the, the name implies. Now I'm going to take a smaller craft stick. This is one of the little guys as compared to the tongue depressors, okay? And that's only because this is, a, this is a small container and this will fit better in the small container. Now again, this is only the part B that I'm mixing up at this point, all right? Now you see how much whiter that has become, all right? This will give me a decent tooth white, I believe. All right, now, this went to the two dram mark. I don't know how well the dram marks will pick up on camera. But this is at the two dram. Uh, let's try and focus it, shall we? This is at the two dram mark right here. So with that, we'll go up to the four dram mark. which will be right here. And we will go there with our part A. All right. I'm just going to put my stick down on my tabletop. I'm going to grab part A. Now this is a lot looser, so you have to be very, very careful how this comes out. This is not, so I don't mean looser, I mean it's thinner. So you, you want to be more, you want to take more care the way this comes out. Now this is a lot of resin, believe it or not, for the teeth. This is a lot, all right? So I'm going to mix this up. Get my little mixing stick. We're going to mix this up. I'm going to try and mix it up so that my hands don't get in the way. Can't help it, left-handed. Left hand gets in the way all the time. That's life. That's what some people say. Now you, may, you want to make sure that you really scrape the bottom of the cup because there's colorant. It's, it's so thick, it's, it shoots right to the bottom. So you want to make sure that you're scraping the bottom of your container. Of course, these, are, these, are, these little mixing cups are way too small to 
tip to check the bottom. So I will just lift it over my head to check the bottom. All right, now that is clear. Okay, that's a good, I think, I think that's a good tooth color. I think that is a really good tooth color. So now at this point, because there is so much, I'm going to open up my mold for my vervet monkey skull. I'm going to open this up, and I think I'm going to try and pour two skulls at once today. Crazy as that sounds, I'm going to give it a shot. And we'll put the top of his box over here. Get that out of the way. All right, put the top of the mold at the back here. So now we have the tooth mold for the African wildcat, or the lower section for the African wildcat, and the lower section for the vervet monkey. Now, it's cold this morning. It's cold. It's not even 50 degrees outside, and it's about, well, it's got to be 60 or lower in the shop this morning. Fill the pipette, as we normally do. Now the pipette, now the mold, this mold has already been powdered. Put the pipette in down at the bottom of the tooth and just start squeezing out resin. Again, the bottom of the tooth, start squeezing out resin. The reason you go into the bottom with the pipette and let the resin draw upward is to avoid trapping air bubbles down in this part of the mold. And again, for the molars, we go into the back of the molar, the deepest part, and just start injecting or releasing the resin, letting it fill the entire tooth section as we go. Now right here is a small tooth detail. Put the pipette in, inject some resin. Wherever you see a small air bubble, just pop it with the tip of the pipette. Here we'll get the little premolar. Now to the back where the molars are the deepest. And we continue to, oops, there goes a bubble that was trapped in the tube of the pipette. Now you see what happens when bubbles are allowed to get into the resin. They will form a bubble. You need to pop the bubbles. As in making the mold, you do not want bubbles. I hate the bubbles. All right, I'm gonna put this aside to let it set. And then I'm going to add resin to the vervet monkey, uh, lower part of the vervet monkey skull. And just as with the kitty cat skull, into the tooth goes the tip of the pipette, releasing the resin. Now they have a sharp curvature to their canines, so you want to be sure you get way down in the tooth or in the tooth mold and the incisors. Same thing with the molars. Now the molars on the primates are not as deep as the molars on other carnivores. Here we go. Be sure you get plenty of it down there. Especially on the white. This off-white. Okay. That takes care of the vervet monkey. And we have little air bubbles. We want to bust those as we find them. We don't want bubbles. We take a little more resin before it begins to 
set. This is, I think this might be beginning to gel, which is kind of nice considering how cold the temperatures here are today. Nice, we're in Cinco de Mayo, the 5th of May, and the temperatures are so cold and so rainy, I don't think any amount of tequila can help. I'm just going to top off the teeth here on the cat. Just topping these off a bit. A few drops here and there. Like so. Just like so. And again with the monkey, we're going to bring over the vervet monkey skull, lower portion, and top off castings of the teeth all right this is beginning to gel a bit just a bit That's good. And I'll show you how much is left in the in the cup. There's quite a bit left in the cup. All right, that's that's a lot. But this resin is inexpensive enough that mixing up a little bit extra is not going to kill anyone. All right. I'm going to bring my modeling tool in and go through and really disrupt any bubbles that might be forming. And by disrupt, I mean scrape them, pop them, destroy them. Okay. Now, this needs to be let alone until the molars set. All right. This needs to be set aside until these molars, until these teeth are fully set. There we go.